just what I mean You too, team, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Well, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven Right and graven Shout out to Graven Team, keep it clean. Here we are, man. Episode number five of the Team Keep It Clean podcast. Man, um, I, I, I shout out all of y'all. Just everybody supporting um, from Team Keep It Clean. Uh, just different people that I know personally. Um, friends, family, just everybody, man. Thank, thank you so much for being willing to take the time out of your day. Whether you just listening just to listen, uh, whether you got it on like in the background while you driving to and from work or you on the road or you just want to just vibe out, man. You might just be taking a ride. So sometimes that's what me and um me and my wife and Carter will do that sometimes just to get out there, especially with how stuff has been now, man, because stuff is obviously not normal and this is becoming a new normal, but it's still not normal. Um, So... You just something. Sometimes you just need to get out of the house, man. So what we'll and it's funny because we did this before this whole quarantine and all this stuff before the, all the whole pandemic and whatnot. We used to just take rides, just ride out, man. The three of us, me and my wife, used to do it before Carter, and then after Carter, we still we still kept it going, man. We just will ride out, and it's just. It's just a vibe, man. Straight up, cause sometimes you just you just want that, man. You just need to uh to get out, just to chill out, just to relax. And I love it, man. I love it. And I like if I could do that every day, uh, I, I would. Like, but Carter, he gotta go to school and stuff. And I gotta go to sleep early, cause Carter gotta go to sleep early, cause I gotta wake up early, cause Carter gotta wake up early. And my wife, she works, so she gotta wake up early. I am not no fan of waking up early, man. Like, oh, boy. But anyway, like, the thing with, with, and I told y'all this already. Like, I'm recording this on uh, Monday. It's Monday, September 21st. It's 4.59 p.m. And um, we're actually going to have our first guest on here today. So I'm excited about that, man. But um, it's 4, now now it's 5 o'clock p.m., September 21st. Uh, So last night, the game, of course, I'll obviously look to the, look forward to the Ravens games above any other games, but I, I was really excited to see the Seahawks take on the Patriots. Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, love them both, and was just excited to see those two go head to head, man. And of course, I know they don't go head to head technically because they play the defenses, but again, like we always say, it's more fun to say it that way that the quarterback's going against the quarterback. So I'm like, oh man, this should be a good one. This should be a fun one. I did expect the Seahawks to win. But um, that ain't even the point. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. I was struggling. I, I, I was really struggling to get to halftime. Made it to halftime. Then halftime was over. Third quarter came. And, oh, it was tough, man. I was, I was trying my hardest, man. Because the game was good. I was enjoying the game. I was really enjoying the game. But then I, I knocked out. I knocked out, man. And that was that. So, <laughs> like, I mean, I just, I, I, I feel like I can't hang no more. Like, it's, it's going to be hard for me. Well, it's going to be different because there's going to be a different level of excitement. Like, when the Ravens play the Chiefs, I'm going to still be a little tired, though, man. And then, oh, man, then we got the post game after. <laughs> oh, that's going to be something right there, man. That is going to be something. But anyway, I'm I'm looking forward to it though. But how y'all doing? I hope all of y'all are just doing really really good, man. Um, I I talk to a lot of y'all uh, via DMs, messaging, whatever. Um, and I'm just uh, you. This is why I always say, man, you you have to. And I know it can be tough because people get rude with you. People be slick out the mouth and whatnot. But you you gotta really try your best to just try to be good to people, man. Cause like we always say, you never know what people are going through, 
And I know people personally who, like, people already uh, have stuff that they got going on already. Like, in their personal lives already. Some may ha have, like, mental health issues or whatnot. Some may have family issues and whatnot. Some different people got different issues. Um, but then with this whole quarantine thing and you being restricted from seeing family members, restricted from seeing friends, just restricted, period. It's messed with a lot of people's headspace, man. It's messed a lot of people up. A lot of people just, it's its a much different lifestyle, man. It just changed so many people's lifestyles. And um, you feel for people, man. So there's been a lot of people that have just been going through it, man. And I feel for people, man. It's, it's tough. It's tough. So um, I i just appreciate y'all uh, reaching out. Um, Just checking on, just checking. Just checking, seeing how things are going. Uh, like I said, I, I talked to a lot of y'all. Uh, we've talked about a lot of different experiences and whatnot. And um, just, I, 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 I appreciate y'all, man. Straight up. I, I appreciate y'all. Um, and somebody that, uh, we actually got a uh, so, sort of, not really funny experience. It was kind of rough for him. Uh, not for me, but um, my guy Kevin, who's going to be joining us shortly. Uh, we're going to talk to him, get some insight on some different things that he's thinking about, and uh, it, sh it should be pretty good, man. And welcome back uh, after that short, brief commercial break. Um, and we do, like I did say, we got our special guest on here. Uh, it's my guy Kev. Go ahead and introduce him, introduce yourself to everybody, and um, and let them know what you do too, man. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, name is Kevin, also known on known on YouTube as Kevin underscore Redline. Uh, uh, I'm a subscriber to Engraven. Uh, when I get a chance, I like to create some. Uh, you know, people call Ravens edits or hype videos, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, that's me. Well, that that's the modest version of his videos. He likes to create fire videos that's going to have y'all hype. It's going to have you jumping up and down and screaming and getting all excited, especially if you're a Ravens fan. But even if you're not a Ravens fan, you're still going to get hype from him. So y'all make sure y'all check out his videos. Uh, I, I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description. So you can see it for yourself, cause I, I can only say so much about him. But when you see him for yourself, you're gonna be like, ah, okay, that's what he was talking about. So anyway, appreciate you. Appreciate that, oh, ain't nothing, man. We appreciate you and those videos. So, um, yesterday we we about, well, we're not even 24 hours removed from the game yet. But yesterday, Ravens had their game. They had their second game of the season. They won. Wasn't a pretty win, but it was a win nonetheless. Um, so, what, what what did you take away from that win? Like, wh first off, what what do you think? Uh, what do you think were the good parts about that win? What the, what, what did they do well to you? Uh, to me, I thought it was it was a bit more improvement in the uh, pass rush. Mm. Uh, I also like the fact that it wasn't as much as the whole. You know, Ravens trying to be cute in certain situations. It was kind of like, That's really let's, good do, let, let's kind of keep it simple, but not too simple because that's that's not how we roll. But they, they, it's, it's like they tried to keep it simple and secure the game. That That's what I noticed hmm. uh, the most. It seems like even though things didn't go exactly as planned a hmm. lot, you know, during the game, it seemed like the, the main focus was securing the game. Mm. More than anything, that's what I liked. Hey, that's a good point, man. I didn't even think about that, uh, but I, I do like how you did mention how they kept it simple, because we we did see the Ravens not throughout the entire year, but more so toward the end of the year. Uh, I was especially, oh man, I especially remember in that Bills game. But you know what? No, they did it early on in the year too, in the uh, in the Chiefs game. So they, yeah, they did it early last year, because they um like their first touchdown of the game. They went, got a touchdown, and then they went for two from jump. So, yeah, they were doing all this, uh, just this extra stuff for, for no reason early on. But they didn't do it every game. They didn't even do it most games, but they did it in enough games. But 
so you you mentioned how they kept it simple uh that that's a really really good point and i think um one of the biggest plays that showed that yesterday uh, was when they went for it on the fourth and I think it was fourth and one and that Mark Ingram direct snap Because uh, I remember seeing that and I saw Lamar uh, go I saw Lamar go out wide and I was like I was thinking ah, I, Will they let Mark Ingram throw it to him? I don't know man because I feel like if Lamar one-on-one -on -one with somebody he, he can get the best of him um, But they just Mark Ingram took the direct snap and he knew exactly which uh, which way he was going to be running. He ran to the left side of that offensive line. And he ran directly to the hole and directly to the end zone. So it was straightforward. It was direct. It was none of the uh, the little play-play the stuff. None of the goofy stuff. None of all that, that pretty stuff. It was just straight up. So I, I really, really appreciated that, like, a lot. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> I was going to say same here because, like, when they when they did it, I thought like, look, man, let's 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 close this game out, <laughs> but let's get the first down. You know, let's go forward on fourth. I was like, I, I just kept chant, had my little chant going. I said, let's keep it simple, run it with Gus. Let's keep it simple, run it with Gus. And then I I was like, hold on, that don't look like Lamar. And I was like, well, I know that ain't Gus. And I was like. Okay, let's see what happens. And next thing you know, touchdown. I'm jumping around like, hey man. <laughs> It was simple, but you know it wasn't what I was looking for. But it, it worked, so yeah. And and that was something else interesting too. Um, like I know you said you were looking for Gus, but I was uh I was looking for Lamar because I was like, hold up, because the way they showed the camera angle when they were lining up, I'm like, may maybe it's just the angle that they're showing it from. But it looks like Mark Ingram is the one that's getting ready to take the snap. But I was I was thinking, nah, nah, they just maybe Lamar's just kneeled down somewhere. Maybe he just I don't know where Lamar is, but he's about to show up. But then they they opened it up and they showed the whole play, and, and I was like, oh, and then I saw Lamar at the bottom of the screen at wide receiver. I was like, well, okay, wait a minute. But I'm glad it just um it ended up working out, man. Uh, now what what do you think they could have done better in this game? Um, while the pass rush was better, I think it still can be better. Um, I'm no, I, what I noticed, and let me not just say, let, let me not be general and just say pass rush, but pass rush speed, because mm. we're, we're out, we're out muscling the other offensive line. It's just not, it's just not quick enough. Um, at, at least from, from what I'm, you know, used to or what I'm noticing with other teams like the Steelers, I hate to say it, but it just seemed like they, they're way, they're much quicker. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I noticed that could use improvement, and you mentioned in your videos, was the old line. It was like, man, what is happening? Like, why is it always somebody in the backfield, it seems like? Mm -hmm. Like, if we still had Joe or just – a non-mobile quarterback would be in trouble. Oh, yeah, that'd be a wrap. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, it's like, uh, and then I noticed, and this is something Coach Evans had mentioned a couple of times, like, mm -hmm. it, it was a couple of plays, uh, notably the, I think it was when TJ, uh, I mean, not, not TJ, but J.J. Watt got his first sack. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like OBJ thought the play was finished or Lamar got the, the ball out or something because he was just standing around mm -hmm. And Lamar was steady getting set, and I was like, "Man, you gotta, you gotta finish." I was like, "That's what Coach, that's what Coach Evans was saying." He was like, "Look, you know, OBJ, he gotta finish. He, he has to finish." Um, and I, I hate to, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because we just so used to just pummeling our uh, opponents, yeah. but I don't think the run game specifically needs improvement. But uh, maybe to run like the planning of the run game because I, I can't really say much because they got what 230 something yards i think it's i think 230 yards. yeah so they still got a good amount of yards as a team collectively yeah um but i do like what they're doing i forgot to mention this but i do like how they're really spreading the ball out you know last week um it was pretty it was pretty even throughout like they gave the ball to the rookie mm -hmm. uh jk they gave it to uh, Gus, and they gave it to Mark, you know. And this week, they threw Lamar in. So, you know, he got the most, but after that, it was Gus, which I'm definitely not used to because 
we've said it plenty of times. It seemed like they're, they're afraid or they just don't want to use Gus. But yeah. he got, you know, he was second in line and it was uh, Mark. So, I, I mean, you know, but as far as the improvements, that's, that's something that uh, I feel like they could do a little bit better with, with the talent that we have around us. Yeah, uh, ball distribution um, amongst the running backs is yeah it has been distributed pretty uh, evenly. Um, I and yesterday, like directly after the game, and even when I was thinking about it this morning, I didn't realize it till I actually saw it that they did actually get like like two hundred thirty rushing yards yesterday. Cause to me, it just it didn't really seem like it, but maybe that's because not one person was just really going off like that like like we like we would be used to last year like last year man last year got us so spoiled man last year like with the way that that running game was um though they were just eating like crazy in a running game uh but they haven't like gone off gone off this year um but they've been consistent and they've been winning but yeah they had like a, a quiet 230 rushing yards collectively uh, yesterday, and like I said, I, I hadn't even hadn't even noticed that. Um, yeah. go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, that that might be a credit to you know what they're doing. They, they're doing something different. I have never seen a team. You know, I, it's only been two games, but I've mm-hmm. never seen a team really just utilize their running backs and quarterback in the way that they did this past game. It was it was weird. So just like you, I was like. Man, the run game need to be better. But then I saw they said it was over 200 yards collectively. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, well, you know, yeah. look, we're winning. You know, uh, you know, as they say, you know, this is Chiefs week. And we'll, we'll see what they're doing. I just hope they keep it simple and play that game. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what we all hoping for, man. This is because, <laughs> you know, man, oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for the same thing, man. I just, oh boy, because this is going to be a uh, a tough one. It's going to be a tough one, real yeah. tough one. Because you know it's Chiefs. It's definitely going to be a tough one. Yeah. It, like, and then they, they always want to bring out, it, it seems like they want to bring the best out on us, man. You know, like they, <laughs> it's like, look, we, we, we have Pat Mahomes. We need to show that he's the best. Mm. And uh, it, it just seemed like, and it's like every time, you know, the past two games that we played them, we stopped playing new Ravens football. Like either we stop running and we try to pass or we going for fourth downs when it's not necessary. I mean, going for two points when it's not necessary. Cause like you mentioned before, like they went for it for, you know, after that touchdown, but didn't they, didn't they go for it again mm-hmm. at some point? They sure did. And it was kind of, it was just like that going. I think we had a couple of failed uh, fourth down attempts. Yeah, it was it was it was rough, man. It was just, yeah. and I, it just felt like they they just took themselves out the game. And and you, the the craziest part, man, that's that's almost like the most frustrating, is that I think they they only lost by five. Yeah. <laughs> they, they lost by five points, so it makes you think like, man, what if if they would have just stuck to their game? What if they would have actually played Raven football and they didn't start running the ball till like the second half? They didn't they didn't start that. They didn't start running the ball till like the second half and, and then it was like they it was just it ended up being too little too late and it was just and they were they were one they were actually one stop away from having one final drive that could have there would have been a potential game winning drive. It would have been the last drive of the uh, of the game because it was third and I forgot exactly how long, but it was third it was third down and the Chiefs they had the ball and they ran the perfect play call. It was beautifully designed. It was like a misdire- misdirection screen where they faked it to one guy but they ended up passing it to uh, I think it was LaShawn McCoy. Who caught the screen? And it it was just perfect how they did it, man. Uh, and that yeah, that game they tore us up with the screens, man. Mm, mm, I, mm. And I said, at, oh, was it that game? No, no, because we had. I'm thinking about the first game because I think we had Terrell Suggs. And he kept bite like he every time he actually got pressure, it was just a screen. They let him pass, mm. and the Ravens didn't make any adjustments. So I I just hope I hope they're taking note of every loss that they had because um 
So what? Lamar has what three losses in the regular season? Sixty six percent of his losses have been to the Chiefs. So <laughs> they need to really look at that and be like, look, we we have the potential to just really run this table. Mm. And not to say that that should be their goal, but like like Lamar said in you know in the video I did, you know. At the Pro Bowl, every game is a Super Bowl. If you mm-hmm. have that mentality, yep. your drive to win is is unmatched. That's true. I agree, man. Um, Cause that, yeah, the Chiefs they they got our number right now. They got our yeah. number uh, with Lamar two and zero, two and zero. One loss in overtime, and the other one by five. But hey, whether it was by five or by fifty, whether it was in regulation or it took twelve quarters to finish. They end up getting the win, and Ravens end up getting the loss both times. So, yeah, spending a week feeling upset. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at least the fans, because you know the the players, yeah. they they get they get over stuff quick. Man. They are they move they move on fast. Yeah. We, By the end of the game, they they over it because they yeah. sitting there chatting. Yeah, they sitting there talking to each other and stuff, having a good time. So yeah, they they be cool with it. But with us, it's 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 a little bit different. It's a little bit different. But I wonder what how playoffs is though. The playoffs that that may be a little bit different for the the players too. I don't know though, man. But yeah, that, taking the loss in the playoffs, knowing it's no it's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Like it, it could be my best friend. You know, you beat me in the playoffs. Uh, I'm gonna have a little <laughs> words for you, man. I'm gonna give you a, a gentleman's handshake, and I'm I'm on the way out. <laughs> And it's it's, it's, it's it's probably bittersweet for him too, though, because it's like, man, it ain't no game next week, and it's tough because your team is out. But then at the same time, it's like, oh, hold up, it ain't no game next week, so I ain't got to go through the training, the practice. I ain't got to go through all that. I get to get a little break. But I'm sure they would rather be uh rather obviously be out there uh, playing, trying to get to a Super Bowl, um, yeah. which hopefully for the Ravens' sake, this this is the year, man. Uh, and, 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 and speaking of that, speaking of like the Ravens window, because I, me personally, I don't think that the Ravens window for a Super Bowl is closing, but I do think that their window for having some of these top talented players, that's closing. Uh, even though Chiefs showed us that salary cap is not even a thing, and if you really want somebody... You can keep everybody you want to, cause these dudes started off uh, free agency with one hundred seventy-seven dollars in cap space. <laughs> I, I, I remember when I when I when I saw that report, I thought that I'm like, oh, okay, somebody must have made a typo on this one, there, cause there's no way. But then I read it and it was like, yeah, they have one hundred seventy-seven dollars in cap space, and I'm like, oh wow. I was thinking, oh yeah, Sammy Watkins, he's out of there. And they, there's no way that they keeping uh, Chris Jones. They, I know they franchise tag him, but yeah, he's he's gonna be going too. Ain't no way. These dudes kept Sammy Watkins. They kept they re-signed Chris Jones to like an eighty million dollar deal. I forgot exactly how much it was. They re-signed Patrick Mahomes to his uh, potential five hundred million dollar deal. Uh, of course, he got a lot of incentives that he would have to hit, but they re-signed him to big money. And they so they they didn't they didn't lose anybody, man. These dudes, they kept their that roster two, and they extended Travis Kelsey too. Almost yeah, forgot they, about that one. It's like between them and the the Rams. Yeah, it's like money is really no object. It's like, look, mm-hmm. y'all want to get paid? Cause I, I guess if you think about it, you know, as far as Kansas City side, uh, you know, I I really don't follow the Rams at all. But mm-hmm. as far as Kansas City side, it's kind of like. It's a trade off. I'm pretty sure they could probably go off and make more money, but it's like I want to enjoy my job. As long as Andy Reid is under the helm, mm. they're they're going to enjoy their job because they're going to be a winning team, right? Yeah. It, like even you know, I can't remember who the backup was last year when Mahomes was out. Uh, was Matt, still, Matt Moore. Yeah, they were still able to win mm-hmm. when you know when it was absolutely necessary. Um, and I think the same has to go for the Ravens if they want to keep mm. people. I think I think if, uh, what's his name, Mosley, if he could go back, he would have been like, I would have took whatever EDC offered me mm-hmm. and stayed with the Ravens. Mm. 
because 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 Adam Gates is out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. and from my point of view, and from a lot of other people's point of view, and I, I think Mosley probably would have took that, you know, stayed here, took whatever they offered him, and stayed here just because of the culture and being a part of like an actual winning team. I know people want to get paid at the mm-hmm. end of the day, but it, it all depends on the player. Like that's why Calais Campbell came here because he said, look, I, I was able to spend my time with the Ravens mm-hmm. at the pro bowl. I talked to my man, Tony Jefferson. Uh, and it seemed like that's where I should go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, that, <sighs> I, f- I think it's possible, but it just depends on the player. Like, you know, it, it's hard to say, like, you know, being able to find a way to keep uh, Stanley and Marlon. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. with what we've seen from the Chiefs and the Rams, it, it seems like it's totally possible. <laughs> yeah, that's true, man. And it's like you, you, you feel for these guys because it's like being at a job. Being at a job and you uh people that... They were once just co-workers, then y'all become friends, then they almost they almost become family. Because y'all get close, y'all spend a lot of time together and whatnot. And you're going to feel for somebody, like, because it's like with Matt Judon, body built by Taco Bell. He always joking around, having fun and whatnot. Uh, then Ronnie Stanley, uh, this big giant dude, but then you hear him speak, he's so soft-spoken. And uh, he just, he, he loved dogs and stuff, and he got... He got some foundation with dogs. I forgot what it is, but they always joking around with him. Then you got Marlon Humphrey, all the post-game Instagram lives, especially on the away games. Uh, but he just having so much fun. Uh, but you you got all these. Then you got LJ Ford. LJ Ford, he's on the final year of his deal. Um, he been a, a real good fit with the team. You got Willie Sneed, who just, he, he his vibe obviously uh, fits in with everybody, too. But you can't keep everybody, man. Um, you can't. Yeah, you can't keep everybody. So people, Jimmy Smith on the last year, his deal. Uh, Anthony Levine, he only signed to a one-year deal. Chris Moore's on a one-year deal. Um, but a big one. A big one because yesterday, somebody who's not on a one-year deal, What is? I think he's in the second. Is this the second year of his extension? I think it is. But Tavon Young, mm. Tavon Young, he uh, his career has been rough. Rookie year, oh, he I loved him, man. Number thirty six yeah. came out. He was always around the ball. Second year, boom, got hurt. Third year, hey, he balled out. Then fourth year, boom, got hurt. Fifth year, this year, boom, got hurt again. Had a good first game. And it's like with Tavon in the first game, I was like, I I, I think um I don't know if it was on the play where David Njoku had mossed him. It was on one of the play with where he went down, and I was like, oh, I was, I was like I was like kind of scared, like oh no, come on, you gotta get up, man. And he got up right away. Uh, but with Tavon Young, it's like always in the back of your mind, like oh man, uh, please don't get hurt, especially in the first game back. Like yesterday, during that game, it didn't cross my mind not one time. Before the game, or and and he got hurt early, but so it, yeah. before he got hurt, it didn't cross my mind at all. I'm like, okay, yeah, Tay Tay, you gonna be straight, whatever. But when he went down, I was like, oh no. But then I still had hope because I was thinking, what? Because he got he got helped up. He got up, help, got helped by the trainers and whatever. And he was walking, but he needed help to walk from the trainers. So I was thinking, okay, uh, it does suck that he's hurt, but he probably he'll just be out couple weeks maybe four five six weeks something like that and he'll come back he'll be able to come back second half of the season come back strong good to go but then it came out that uh he was done first it came out last night that he was done for the year with a knee injury then it came out today Harbaugh confirmed it that it was a torn ACL and he's done for the season uh so what do you feel is going to happen with Tavon Young next if anything what do you think is the next step for him the next move See, you know, with Harbaugh, it's like, if he likes you, and it seems like he likes Tavon, I think he'll, he'll, mm. you know, when, when training camp comes around next year, he's going to give Tavon a chance, but I think he's going to have competition at that slot. 
you know, they might draft somebody, they might bring somebody in. It's going to be competition there. And if Tavon doesn't blow the competition away, I think he he might that it might be it for him. Because and the reason I say blow him away because at this point you have to factor in the chance of injury. You can't just you know barely outperform your competition. Right. You have to outperform them like I don't know what any ball coming your way it has to be swatted or intercepted. Period. Like you know. Hmm. You have to make the competition look irrelevant. Like you're supposed to be there at that point because you have more to prove. You 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 don't just prove that you're still like you still got it. Like you still can move despite the injury. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to you know you have to just weigh out performance. Mm. And that's just my opinion. I think that's how they would carry it. Um, and like when you said yesterday, you was comfortable, man. Every play, I was nervous. Because of what was going on around the league. Ah. And especially mm. after the Tavon Young one, I was like, oh, my gosh, please don't let nothing. Like, every play I was I was like, Winston, like, uh, is, he, is he all right? Is he getting up? Yeah. And that's, what, that's with everybody. And, uh, like, seeing some of those injuries yesterday, like, I knew, I knew Tavon was done, mm. but I knew Nick Bosa was done. I knew Saquon was done. Uh, like, like I can instantly recognize a knee injury from what happened to me at the flag game. Like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You might as well tell them about that too. What happened at the? Uh, that was yeah. That was the first one. The first uh, yeah, team keep it clean first... flag football game. Yeah. So, uh, ironically, I was just about to call you to like take my place. But you had you had uh, hopped in for somebody on the other team, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just wait till after this drive, and then I'm gonna I'm take a break. Yeah. So the, it was it was a call to run play, so they gave me the ball. Well, the, the plan was to give me the ball. It was a guy to the left, nobody was picking him up. So I told the QB, I was like, hey man, pick up the guy on the left. So the place, you know, he says, hey, he never picked up the guy on the left. So mm. I tried to like juke. So when I planted, that guy's knee hit my knee while I was planting my left foot. Mm. And when he hit my knee, I heard something crack. I fall to the ground. I try to get up. I can't stand up. Like my knee is buckling. And I'm like, man, what's what's wrong? So I try to stand up again. It buckled again. Mm. So, you know, people came over, helped me to the side. And I, I was looking at it. I'm like... I, it, it feels like regular knee pain. Like so, for me personally, mm-hmm. had I, you know, had it not buckled when I tried to take a step, I would have never known I tore anything. And I tore up a lot. I tore my ACL, my meniscus, and I had a fra- a, a lateral tibial fracture. Mm. Which and the fracture is still there. Like I, luckily, I didn't have to get that addressed. But you know that that ACL and meniscus. That had to be addressed. Like, I couldn't walk, period. Mm. Man. But, um, so when I see certain things, like with Saquon, when he, what happened with him was, uh, he was trying to, I, I don't, I can't remember who was tackling him, but he was trying to keep his balance, stiff arm, and avoid being tackled all at once. Mm. And, he took a he took one step and it was just too much pressure. I think it was his left knee. I'm not sure. It was too much pressure on that one leg, whatever one it was, and you can see it buckle in. I was like, oh, he tore his ACL. Yeah. I said meniscus minimal. Uh, you know that's best case scenario because that's six weeks and you can you know you can get back to regular activity. Um, uh, same with uh, Nick Bosa. The way he got the way he got bent back. It wasn't just his knee bending backwards. It 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 got pushed to the side. Hmm. So that that's why I knew it was you no know, he was gonna be done. Jeez. But and with Tavon, he thought it looked like like when you go back and watch it, when they played it in the slow motion, mm-hmm. I can't remember which leg it was. I think it was his left. But it looked like he was he was he thought he was gonna land on his right foot, mm-hmm. but he was higher than he thought. So when he came down, he came on his left foot, 
and wasn't he couldn't brace himself for the impact. So that's why his knee buckled and tore his ACL. Hmm. It was just too much pressure with not enough not enough bracing for it. Yeah, that was tough, man. I, I felt yeah, for him because it's like, man, it's, it didn't I, already – go ahead. I, I feel for anybody because that recovery process, it, it's not just – uh, a physical thing like man when I'm going to walk it, you don't just worry about your physical abilities your mental state you've really got to be strong to mentally feel like like to the, it's been a, it's been what a year since the original uh the first one yeah yeah and I, I'm still I'm still scared I'm still scared to like plant or anything like that if I slip I'm I'm scared to get up if I fall, I'm scared to get it. It's, it's like you got to shake that mentally. And that's why I get it. It's their career. So they have to. But it's still not an easy feat. Like, I will never forget that. Hmm. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Eh? <laughs> like, Matt Skira, I give him all the credit in the world. Oh, yeah, because he had, he had a couple things going on. His whole knee was busted. Like, yeah. everything. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hmm. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, uh, Tavon will be, uh, you have a nice recovery. But I just, I know you said, that you made, that's a really good point about Harbaugh and, um, his, his favorites, so to speak, and the guys that he really, really, really likes. Um, cause we've seen him over the years and whatnot. Uh, but with, especially even recently with, like, with Chris Moore. Um, yeah. he, I, I, I thought he was gone. I really thought Chris Moore was gone. I'm like, oh, well, he never really got much of an opportunity with the Ravens to really prove himself as a receiver. But, I, I, yeah, they're not going to re-sign him. He's going to probably go get signed by the Jets or something like that. But they re-signed him. I was like, oh, okay. Well, he's he's back. But um, That's what everybody was thinking. Like, the Jets, here he comes because it's yeah. like everybody goes to the Jets. Yeah, man. It's like you're going to get a guaranteed a nice payday or whatever. But you're going to get a nice little raise. Um, like you see Peanut, he went over there. Mosley went over there. Bart Scott, I mean, it's a lot of dudes we could talk about over the years, man. But um, with Tavon Young, I I really, uh, I, I, think he, he, I think he might be out, man. I think he yeah, might I be mean, gone. His chances, his chances of being gone... I'm not. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's it's high, but you know, being that he's with the Ravens and like I said, you know, Harbaugh likes him. It's a chance. He he has a better chance than if he was with a different franchise. That's true. But I think. And, and, I mean, we can't forget about EDC because it's yes. like, look, man, mm-hmm. if, if you're not if you're not right with EDC, if you're not uh, helping us produce, it's like. Look, no hard feelings, but it's it's business at the end of the day. And that's that's the first person who I thought of with, when when Tavon uh when I was thinking about it last night and when he went down when they confirmed that he was done for the year, I was like, oh man, yeah, EDC, EDC. He knows he's he's such a good GM because um he obviously he'd be cool with the players and stuff, but he know how to separate business from personal. Like yeah. with um uh Eric Weddle, this guy team leader. Definitely helped the defense a lot because he was calling the plays. Was with the team for what I think three years, and Eric DeCosta thanks, but no thanks. You're gone. Got rid of him. Fan favorite. Everybody loves him. Oh yeah, ice cream after every win. Uh, all that stuff. You're out. And then uh, with with Tony Jefferson, another one. Fan favorite. A lot of people love him. Uh, leader on the team, spokesperson on the defense for the team, because Eric Weddle was gone. Veteran guy got hurt, got hurt, and while he was, see, the, and that's what happened with Tavon Young yesterday too. He was making a play and got hurt making a play with Tony Jefferson. Um, he he went down like a hero because while he was getting hurt, he he, I think he grabbed. I think it was it was against the Steelers, but I think he like grabbed their tight end or something, so he wouldn't catch the ball or wouldn't get away. So I forgot exactly what happened. Yeah, I think he prevented a touchdown. I think it was it was either I can't remember. Was it a pass interference? But ah, it was like yeah, a pass interference. that's what it was. Yeah, cause I think the ball like tipped and and uh, Earl Thomas caught a pick from it or something. But yeah, it didn't count because of the pass interference. The defense was holding something. 
it was something, but he, he stopped it from being a, a really, really big play. And he got hurt at the same time, and that was the end of his year. So I was like, man, this dude, okay, Tony Jefferson, we see you. you, you your body was done for the year, but you still made sure you ain't give up that play. Air DaCosta, thanks, but you're out. Got him going. And, so and the thing that was uh, going against Tony was that, you know, Chuck Clark came in and balled out. Right. So, so, so as far as, uh, not to go back, but as far as like Tavon, he can look at it two ways. You got uh, 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 Tony Jefferson on one side, which is, you know, the case that you don't want to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And then you have like a Deshaun Elliott on the other. Ooh. Somebody who's had an injury history, but is out there still getting his his shot despite his injury history, now, and he he never even proved himself. That's true, but the biggest difference with that money. Yeah, money. That is that is a big one. Deshaun Elliott, a, a six round pick, I think. So he's not getting paid much money. Um, Earl Thomas. It was obviously it was more it was it was, it was more than play that they were concerned about. But with Earl Thomas, they got rid of him, and I, and I think I think part of it too. I, I think they just really didn't like that contract that they gave him. I think they they paid him a lot of money, and I think they were like, man, like we we expect this dude to be going off. Um, but then of course that paired with all the other stuff that was happening, it just it was just it was, it was no good. Um, but with uh, Tony Jefferson too. He was on that four-year deal. I think it was like 28 mil, still something like that, but money. Eric Weddle was also, he had a decent deal, money. He, but, with, yeah, with Deshaun Elliott, he ain't really making nothing. But so, now, so yeah, like you said, uh, Tavon Young, he can look at it from the two different sides of the spectrum. Like, he can look at it like a Tony Jefferson. Uh, yeah, like Tony Jefferson, because he got hurt, then he got out. But he's more on that side. And if anything, it's it's almost worse for him because his his second year and his fourth year and now his fifth year too all injury reserve. So it's I don't know. I I just anything could happen. Um, one thing I, I I will say that I think is for sure um, is that if he does, well, he's not gonna be on the same contract that he's on right now. Now, I don't remember all the details of his deal, but I don't think that they keep him at the either they get rid of him completely or they uh, they do some type of restructuring something. But where they at the same time, though, if they restructure, um, I wonder if they would push it, push money to future years, because that's that's never any good because they don't do that with Brandon Williams like 80 million times. man. Every time they restructure, they they go to restructuring a deal. This is the first one up. Um, but with Tavon Young, I wonder if if he if they would ask him to take a pay cut, and how that would even work for him to take a pay cut. Um, so, but I, I just I I just I really do think he's going, man. I do love Tavon Young, man. I, I love him. Yeah, me too. I, I was hopeful. I was like, especially at, like you said, after he made the uh, made it through the first game. Mm -hmm. You know, still look like he was able to keep up with uh, the competition. Yeah. I was like, all right, we set, man. Yep. Yep. But, no, nah, man, he couldn't hold up. And, yeah, I, I just, I'm more on the lines of thinking that Eric DaCosta is just going to be like, appreciate you, Tavon. Thank you for everything. But we just, we got to go in another direction, man. And um, to your point, too, earlier, I don't. I don't know who that's gonna be right now, um, but like like you talked about with um, with uh, Chuck Clark, with when Tony Jefferson went down, Chuck Clark came in, he did his thing. Chuck Clark ended up getting him a nice extension, and Tony Jefferson ended up being on the way out. But for who who is gonna replace Tavon Young? Oof, I no clue because I do love Marlon Humphrey. Don't love him in the slot. That is not his specialty. He's an outside corner. Uh, he is their best option in the slot, but he's not no slot corner. 
Uh, because they they can't put Jimmy Smith there because he definitely can't keep up with no quicker receivers on the inside. On the outside, it'd be straight, but on the inside, oh no, uh, it is it, he, he way past that. Um, Marcus Peters, I'm sometimes I get surprised why they don't put Marcus Peters in there, but maybe they know that um he's he just he's so productive uh, as a corner just getting his picks on the outside. I I don't know though, but I, I sometimes I wonder that, but because they they never really put him in there. Uh, but I, who, what do you, what do you think the Ravens are gonna do uh, at slot corner? See, I mean, it's too soon to like. Uh, maybe they'll bring somebody up and keep Anthony Avery because mm-hmm. that, that's who uh, replaced him, right? Not well, and, Anthony Avery. They had him playing on the outside yesterday, um, and they had uh, Marlon the slot, yes. Marlon Humphrey. Oh, they put Marlon. I thought they had uh, Avery. Mm-hmm. Um. Because I think, ooh, what, I think they, it was one of their tight ends. They might have had him in there a little bit, but I, I I know they had Marlon in there a lot, and they they did the same thing last year too. Um, but he, oof. But go ahead. I mean, I, I think I think uh, in the meantime, I think Wink is going to try to develop, you know, a scheme in which he can contain like slot receivers. Because it's nothing, it's nothing that they can do immediately. It's not like it's anybody that I know of that could come in and, and be lights out in the slot, you know, in the slot corner position. But mm. um, I think they're gonna come up with, I don't know, some kind of zone scheme and certain and, and, and look at certain situations. Because I mean, look, if they put Tyreek Hill in the slot Ooh, this boy. week, mm. it's kind of like you, 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 you forced to kind of scheme a defense over man, you know, man coverage. Mm, mm, mm. So, like, <laughs> we was in that position with Tavon. So, without Tavon, yeah, boy. and it's kind of like, execution has to be top notch. They cannot, yes. you know, if the, that's why a pass rush is so important mm-hmm. uh, at this point. So, mm-hmm. we at least got, and, and it has to be more than keeping Mahomes on his toes. It has to be being directly in his face, directly interfering with uh, his passes. Because otherwise, all we're doing is wasting time. <laughs> if you're not, if you're not affecting his throwing motion or his vision or something, you're wasting time. Because if you can't get down, if you can't get to the quarterback uh, quickly. All you're doing is giving your giving their receivers time to just outrun your men, and we've seen it firsthand. You give them enough time, they'll get open. Yeah, they they got a so. they got a track team over there in Kansas City, man. Yeah. So they definitely uh <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a game. Well, <laughs> Ravens better bring it, man. And it's funny because I I think I think they're gonna try to I think what the Chiefs are gonna try to do is shock us. I think they're going to try to run, do outside runs and screens like they did the first game and then hit us with something uh, like a deep pass later on mm-hmm. out, of, out of nowhere. I think, and, and it all depends. Like, we have to we have to be efficient with the run, uh, with the run defense early in the game because they have speedy wide. They have, like you said, they got a track team over there. We have to shut them down, shut their run game down at the very least. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> that's true, man. Because uh, it's like with the Chiefs, you you want to make them one dimensional. Well, you want to wait. You want to make any team one dimensional. But with the Chiefs, it's like if they one dimensional with the pass game, it could still be a problem. Yep. Um. So Chiefs, they just. They're a strong team, man. They're a strong team. Strong, strong team. Uh, and they they were a good case of the rich getting richer. Because um, they they got better this offseason. They got, especially on offense, getting a, uh, the Clyde Edwards Elaire. Because he just, mm-hmm. more so that first game, of course, against the Texans. But he he was looking real deal, man. He was looking, I don't think he went off like that yesterday. I ain't get to see his numbers. But I, I'm still remember him from that first game and just how smooth he ran. Ravens just, they just going to have to be on it, man. They're going to have to be on point uh, when we do play those Chiefs, man. Because it's, it's not going to be it, easy. 
it's funny that you said it because remember I, I hit you up uh, before the season even started. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this dude can make cuts like, like I, I I've never seen anybody you know make cuts like that since I'm not gonna say he's Barry Sanders, but he he just make them so quick. And then uh, then I watched an analysis video on him. They said he's not the fastest, but it's gonna be hard to find somebody who makes cuts as sharp and as quick as he does. So. Um, like I said, if we can hold them up on the run game, I think I think we can match up with them pretty well. Um, but I'm not gonna act like we're just gonna we're just gonna steamroll them. I, I'm I'm confident in the team. I just hope the team doesn't do any of these uh you know antics that they like to do in big games. Mm hmm. That's true. It's true, and uh, yeah, hopefully they they'll just be ready with it, man. Uh, and it's it's gonna take everything too. It's 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 gonna take everything because it's gonna take everything from um. It's gonna take both coaching and execution, uh, to both be on point together, man. Because especially in a game like this, well, one can't do it without the other. They they gotta be on point. Now this game, one good thing about it too, it's not. Regardless of how it goes, whether Ravens win or lose, it's it's not the end of the season. It's it's literally week three, and while this game on on paper and on a schedule, you're looking at it right now like, oh man, this is the Chiefs. This is such a big game, and of course we want to beat the Chiefs, but this is uh this it's not the end of the season. Um, this is literally the very beginning. We are still in the first. We haven't even reached the halfway point. We ain't even reached the what the we ain't even reached the fourth a fourth of the season yet. So it's still super super early. Still want the Ravens to win, take care of business, cause them Chiefs got us right now. But yeah, we it's it's still really 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 early. Um, a lot of teams is getting their kinks out. A lot of teams uh still getting some stuff together. Ravens included. Um, but with Ravens they. In a lot of areas, they have that advantage over a lot of other teams because of this offseason, but they, they've already been together. They've already been uh, a team and whatnot. They got a lot of the same players returning. Uh, but offensive line, man, that offensive line is just, it it, it worries me a bit. Uh, in pass protection, mostly. Um, and, run, and with the opening lanes in the, in the run game, that I'm not – worried about that and again they again, they had that sneaky 230 yards yesterday but pass protection is what concerns me uh especially yesterday like i'm thinking okay i know who jj watt is i know everything he done done in his career and whatever uh he probably gonna be a hall of famer blah 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 that's cool good he's been a good player one defensive player of the year two times all that but i'm thinking oh one-on-one -on -one? Lamar Jackson and J.J. Watt, oh, please, it's Lamar all day. Like, Lamar make J.J. Watt miss so easily. But yesterday, J.J. was just getting through, man. He was getting through. Um, and it was like, whoa, like, what's going on? So do, do you have any, like, concerns about the offensive line? Or you just think it's just part of growing pains or what? Um, I'm not really worried about... I guess, look like, like initially I was I was worried because Lamar got caught by the Browns. He got caught by the the Texans. I just think we're used to teams looking foolish when it comes to one on ones, and obviously, I think Lamar is changing the way he's approaching the game. So maybe in the time because it, he's not he's not run. I don't think he was ever like really run first, but it was. I think he was quicker to run the ball. I think now he's more so looking for the open man, which delays mm -hmm. his um, his chances to evade the defenders. So I think that's why times where we're used to him being elusive enough to get away, I just think it's. A split second longer because he's still looking down the field to see who's open and who's not and that's why he's getting caught hmm. that plus the struggles on the O-line 
But mm. I think the, the thing about the old line, I, I honestly think that's something that they're going to correct as the as the season goes on. Because, mm. you know, we didn't, like, like we mentioned, we didn't have training camp, you know, and we didn't have a preseason. So it's no way to, it was no way for them to really gel against people who are fighting for the same thing that you're fighting for. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully that is it. They're just taking uh, some extra time to gel and just click and just really get things going, man. Uh, but anyway, we're going to wrap it up here, man. I, I appreciate you hopping on. Uh, on to the podcast. You have me, man. Oh yeah, ain't, ain't nothing, man. And um, again, let them know uh, where to find you, just in case they forgot. Of course, it's gonna be on the YouTube version of this. It'll be in the uh, the link in the description. Uh, but just in case you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcast, whatever you're using to listen to it, uh, go ahead and let let them know where they can find you. So when they get a chance to, uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, my my YouTube name is Kevin underscore Redline, so if you search that up, you can uh, you'll be able to pull up my videos. Um, I really haven't established my Instagram and Twitter like that because I'm I'm not really on there except for when I you know chat with you. But once that's up, you know I'll definitely let everybody know what that is. All right, cool. Sounds good, man. Uh, so appreciate it. Appreciate y'all listening. Hope y'all enjoy. It. And on that note, see y'all in the next episode. We out.